Hello, Internet Magic Man here from MMOBomb.com, bringing you another first look video. This time it's for Tataro's Rebirth, brought to you by Funpool Works Incorporated and available on the Game & Game platform. Now, the game just launched a couple of days ago, two or three days ago, very end of October here, and until almost the end of November, just shy of that, there's going to be in-game events giving you various scrolls and prizes. We're going to spend about 20 minutes in the game or so, checking it out, giving you our first impressions. Now, we've only got one server, two different channels, so we'll just jump into a channel here. Now, I've already played the game a bit. As you can see, there is no character creation to speak of, so you'll create like a family name, very limited on the characters. This was supposed to be Shade Light, like the group name. It's a name I use in other MMOs, but, you know, we ran out of characters, so you're pretty limited, and that can't be changed. But you do have multiple characters, so you don't create characters, you control an entire group of people. And initially, there's just going to be one or two, you'll pick up a third, you'll pick up a fourth. I've picked up four different characters so far, and you get an idea just by clicking on them of their basic information, some backstory. And yes, text is a big deal in this game. It's challenging to read at times, as you can see the... You know, the words cut off in boxes and continue on the or long range m agic. So, yeah, it gets a little challenging there, but you can see your basic attributes. Now, each character's got its own skill set, its own abilities, and you'll be getting those skills and abilities along the way through skill points that are collected via gameplay in a uh, group bundle. So, you gain a thousand points, you can spend those points across all characters. Now, individual characters do level up. As you can see, I've leveled uh, Soma to six, uh, Pinko and Tangi to seven, uh, Shu to nine, and uh, is Cilia to seven and we'll show you how to do some of that in-game as well. We're going to enter the game. I don't have access to the Royal Castle yet, and that's going to be a recurring theme in this particular first look. There is an awful lot of things that become available later and later and later and later, but it takes a uh, long time to get those things and even open up various modes. So right now, we're in the public square, so we can see other players in here. Now, the control scheme that they're going to give you is uh, two... There's two different control schemes that you can pick from. One is keyboard-based, but wasn't very intuitive as far as what buttons did what. It basically catered to pay people playing with two hands on one keyboard, so you got that option. You also have the mouse option, which if you just hold down the left mouse key, you can drag and move your character holding down the right mouse key moves and drags your camera as well graphically obviously not a very impressive game uh, it does remind me though in some particular places like uh, cut scenes and stuff like that of something very reminiscent of older school RPGs like Skies of Arcadia back on the Dreamcast things like that one of my favorite games of all time uh, it does have gamepad support, but I'll tell you what, I have not gotten it to work in a very good way at all. So what I've done is I've gone to the basic controls and I have remapped everything. I'm playing with a Razer Naga mouse. Uh, so I've remapped movement to WASD and the skills to 1 through 7, rather than using arrows on the right hand of the right hand side of the keyboard and uh, keys like ZXCV to use abilities uh, and combinations. Yeah, like the initial, so skill one, the initial key is Z. Skill four is Z and X at the same time. No, that wasn't going to work for me. So I would imagine that most of you are going to do some remapping of your own <clears throat> in the game as well. So this is our main hub area. But we're not going to spend too much time here. I can see everybody, all the other players and their family names and fun stuff like that. We're going to head to the world map. This is an instance-based game. Not, not so much open world, but you can travel to various places on the map. Now, I only have one available to me. I'm almost level 10, so we'll be able to move into Alsmir very soon. So we'll go to Findus. Now, notice what happens here. 
there's no parties with waiting lists, so I can quick join and just jump into a party, or I can just enter the town on my own, which will create its own party that will support up to four players. I can go ahead and make that public, which means if somebody else comes to this screen for this town, they'll see my party and they can jump in if they want to. Or I can make this private if I just wanted to play solo which is what I'm going to do for the sake of the first look. So here we are in town, and everything is pretty standard as far as the UI layout goes. The bottom of the screen has your experience bar, your time remaining until the next content point refill, which I am capped right now, so there is no time on that. Uh, my Lilu, which is the in-game currency. And then you'll notice that I have a number of hot slots I can put things in. I have a skill panel that I haven't opened up all the skills on. On this character yet so let's go see what that last skill is and we'll talk about character progression a little bit so we get head on over to the skill master we're gonna learn skill on this character I have 809 skill points again that's a shared bank across all characters I'm in my level one slot still now I can't rank these up yet see notice that chop training which is just a pretty basic attack uh, the chop training level 2 requires level 10 or higher. This character is not level 10 yet, so they're... Oh, I can't even get the last Gale chop. I can't get my last ability. It's level 15 or higher. And if I tried to get it, it would consume 200 skill points. So you'll be spending quite a lot of points. Not only that, later in the game, there are actual phases. So in addition to the skills of my basic phase for this character. Once I get to level 35 or higher, I can spend 500 points and open up. Basically, it looks like subclasses is a nice way to think of it. Uh, so I can open up Sword Dancer, a phase specialized in enemy control, or Counter Attacker, a phase specialized in melee attacks, and they get certain buffs along the way. Even further down the chain, once you hit level 50 on each character, you can further split those into a different phase. And you have the ability to swap phases, which would re up whatever skill panes. Notice there's some ghost hot bars behind there for my various phases. So lots of customization as far as the characters and their skills, kind of making up for no customization on the characters themselves. Switching characters is very easy. Uh, just click down here and pick which character you want to jump to. And now I can talk to this person and learn skills on this character if I wanted to. With the same options as far as phases, or subclasses basically, all the way through for each and every character. We can take a look at our skills and our virtues, which we don't have any yet. But again, something else that's learned from the skill master through virtue points uh, and our phases. We can take a look at all of that through the skill window. We've got our quests right now. Uh, I don't have uh, any, which is perfect for what we're going to do here on the first look. Messenger and chat options, guild options. On the right-hand side, I've got my inventory, which does include the old picking up items that have to be identified, and it costs Lilu to identify them. Uh, now, I've got quite a bit of Lilu because they hand you 30,000 to start with once you go through the tutorial and everything. We've also got our inbox, our paid storage, which we don't have anything in yet, our icon guide, which uh, that's the ping and connection to the server for you, and of course, the cash shop, supported by Gcoin. Now, these are character specific, so taking a look at a character, I can get different costume packs. Premium growth packages, you'll receive benefits to support character growth for a certain period. I've gotten some of these in-game. XP boost, basically. 20% XP boost, stuff like that. I can also get team contracts. If Soma's the highest level character in your account, it will be ineffective. But this is how you're going to drag some of those players that may or the characters that you don't like playing all that often. You can drag them through uh, some experience gains. Functionality, we've got a couple of options in here. Uh, as far as enchantment stones, yes, you will be using a similar a system similar to things like Terra to upgrade gear with enchantment stones. And then, of course, we can buy some cosmetic hair. So, arguably, 
It's one of those games where you're going to be doing so much grinding of the same stuff over and over again just to level each individual character. Now, the frame rate, as you can see, is not that great. It's not... Um, it's There's no lag or anything going on like that, but the camera just... Ugh. Yuck. All right, so notice the icons. Let's get into some gameplay. Notice the icons above some NPCs. So these are indicative of what type of quests they offer. So Lazed here with his exclamation point. These are just standard quests, sometimes repeatable. Hansen over here has the icon for what's called our campaign quests. Now there's a a big delineation between the two of these. Campaign quests, you actually go into as a group uh, of three, and you can assign some of your party as backup. And everybody in those will gain experience once the quest is completed. Normal quests, you're only going to go in with one character. So if I want to pick up... A particular quest let's say collecting logs and I go and complete that on this character and turn it in on this character then the experience is used on this character and this character only so you want to swap characters around to distribute experience if you're trying to level everybody up uh, to stay around the same level so that when you do campaign quests you don't have one overpowered character and a bunch of weaklings in the damn group uh, so it is, again, one of those very, very, very grindy games uh, to get what you want with the party you want and things like that. So from this town, I've got two different maps I can go to. I've got Berta's Mushroom Farm, which is level 1 through 5, and the Reed Beds, uh, which is levels 5 through 8. Notice when I'm taking quests that it shows me which, uh, through the picture, which one it's going to be. So right now I have the mushroom farm selected. Let's go ahead and we'll up this a little bit. I only have normal difficulty available at the moment, but uh, through f more uh, gameplay, it would open up normal and hard modes of these, and some quests may be difficulty specific. Now, I've queued up the reeds, so we'll take collecting logs. We'll accept that quest. And we'll go ahead and we'll accept the other reed quest that he has for us as well. Might as well, since we're headed to the reeds. And I could do this across the board. Head over to Berta. Talk to her. Pick up her reed. She only got one that's repeatable, so we'll take that. That way I'm getting as many quests done in one area as I can. Now I could keep picking up more and more. There's obviously another character there. But let's just go ahead and start the game here. It's going to throw me in the reed beds. Notice I only have one character, an experience bar at the bottom, a fatigue bar that goes up when you do these regular types of missions but does not go up when you do campaign missions. Now I don't know the penalty for a full fatigue bar yet. I'm a little worried that it may be something like character is unusable for a period of time. I don't know. Now, as far as combat here, it is action-based in the respect that you do have to be aimed at your uh, target. So, for instance, there's a level 5. And from back here, if I face this way and press the 1 key, which you see is the Z key down here, to do my slash. If I'm facing away from the target, it does not do anything. I have to be facing the target itself for this particular ability. No tab targeting, that type of thing. Spacebar is what picks up loot and stuff on the ground. Of course, you may be rebinding the hell out of the game as I talked about earlier. Now notice the map in the upper right hand corner shows me that in the reeds I'm in this bottom pane right now. By taking the teleporter I'll be moved up to the next point. At the next point there will be a portal A that goes off to the left and a portal B that goes off to the right. It shows you in your quest pane what you need to do in your current area to open the portal. When you have multiple portals to choose from the criteria will be different on both portals but you can only open one. So you want to make sure, like I have a quest off to the left up here and to the right. I've already done the one to the right before, uh, and although I've picked it up as a repeatable, I'm going to make sure that in the next screen I open portal A so that I can go off to the left and try that. WASD movement, scroll wheel pulls my mouse in and out. Uh, now, 
I did mention that it's action combat as far as the aiming goes. It's not action combat in the respect that it's it's not as fluid and smooth as it would need to be to truly be called action combat. If you press a button too many times, like I'm pressing one, again, Z key here did not display that uh, the remapped key, it will keep comboing that particular skill. And I can get animation locked in that and get the shit pummeled out of me because the uh, enemies got behind me during the animation. I want portal A, so I've got to defeat two Keratums. There's one. Let's go get him first. I don't want to axe up oh, and another one spawn. So there we go. Now Portal B won't open, but had I defeated these first, Portal B would have opened and I would not have the option to get Portal A. So I just wanted to ensure that I got Portal A quickly. And let's start using some other abilities. A little charge ability. Three is a buff to myself and to parties. I've got Lion Sword, swings the sword repeatedly to attack an enemy ahead and move forward. And I've got Smack, swings the sword to attack nearby enemy twice and has a high chance of knocking down the enemy. So we'll go ahead and use that. Lilu pouches are just items that I can sell to the to a vendor to get that much Lilu, so 500 Lilu pouch. That'll get me 500 Lilu, imagine that. Now notice I am defeating those uh, required characters here, but it's not counting because I've already opened Portal A. I've completed all of my quests, so now it's just pretty much make it to the boss, beat the boss, get my rank, whether it's S, A, B, whatever, and head on back to town to turn these quests in. Now I'm about to level up here in a little bit pretty quickly. I should level before the end of this. What do I got to do here? Defeat 25 monsters to open the portal. Now, once I'm in here, I cannot notice that I've lost the ability to switch my character. However, I could do all of these quests, and, I, and this is probably what I'm going to do since this character, if I can get it to hit level 10 before I leave, this is what I'll do. Uh... I'm going to get the experience from fighting all these things and from clearing the the area. But then I'm going to take the quests and turn them in on a different character. So I do have that option to kind of dump experience. And now you can start to see why in the cash shop those experience uh, drag items to bring somebody that is not your highest level character, get them some huge XP bonuses might be beneficial and maybe a little mm, shady in the cash shop uh, due to, yeah, this game just lends itself to a ton of grinding. Now, it's going back to the action combat that we were talking about earlier and how it's not as smooth as it would uh, need to be to be considered true action combat, don't get surrounded. Uh, even at low levels, getting surrounded can be, particularly if you don't have, or you do have, but it's on cooldown, a, an ability that's an AoE attack around you. Uh, without that, getting surrounded even at low levels can be extraordinarily deadly because your character, again, gets locked into a damage animation and you can't trigger anything if you're, if you can't weasel your way out of being surrounded so it, it there are it is deadly even at low levels to just go willy-nilly into a group of level one or level three characters now i don't have to completely kill everything in here if i don't want to as long as i do what is required to open up the portal in this case uh four warriors well we haven't even seen them spawn yet Ability 4 and 5 on cooldown now. Ability 1 does not have a cooldown, so we don't have to worry about that. There's some of the targets that I need. And we got a combo of 138 kills going. We're just going to jump ahead. Normally, I would fight this stuff for the experience, but I did hit level 10, so... We'll just jump ahead to get out of here and back into town. Now we're at our little boss. 
easy to get surrounded in boss fights. Uh, hopefully, I'm going to see if I can just go ahead and nuke the boss down real quick, because that's the only one that's the required kill. There we go. I got it. <laughs> Luckily, I got it without having to... Uh, or without dying due to being surrounded. So we are done here. We'll head back to town. No sprint or anything. So you get this slow ass walk. Dump, dump, step, step, step. Ugh. And we got a B. That's fine. We let a lot of enemies live and we were running through there. So now that this character's hit level 10, let's go ahead and hit the skill master real quick. And we're going to learn some skills here because now we can rank some of our basic level skills up. So we'll double click that. Double click that, we're spending 150. We can also learn Force Recharge. Now we've opened up some level two abilities through doing that as well. So uh, sure, let's go ahead and, and add that. So we're gonna learn those. Now notice what started to happen. We've got Will of Victory in the front and we've got other abilities that are queuing up through force. Now I don't have uh, force to be able to switch to that right now because I'm in the in the damn town. But I should I would be able to use those uh, force abilities later. So let's report our quest as complete. Oh no, I didn't want to do this. I want to switch characters, even though the experience isn't all that grand. Let's go to Soma, who's level six. And we'll report this complete on Soma to get a nice chunk of experience. Go up to Lazid, we'll do the same thing. Report these two quests as complete. And there we go. So we've got Soma some experience there, even though Soma wasn't part of the group. Let's go do one campaign mission and take a peek at that. There are other modes, uh, other quest types too. So if you see this icon, except it's red, it's a training mission. Uh, a few different ones, that's, I think four that you have to know about. Uh, and other modes of play, including party play and things like that, uh, they open up at later levels. So there's a lot to grind for in this game. And I'm going to skip a... Skip, 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 skip. skip. Skip, 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 skip. Skip, 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 skip. 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 Oh, skip. Even skipping. No, that's not what I want. I gotta go talk to you now. Come on. Let's get there. Now, to open up other towns, you do have to complete the campaigns in the previous town. So, it's very hub-oriented. You notice that the gameplay and the combat takes place in its little instances. Even the storylines themselves, you cannot move forward with the story in one town until the campaign's been cleared out in the previous town. At least, that's the way I understand it from the way the tutorial described it. All right, so let's pick our party. Obviously, we're gonna throw you in slot one, two, three. Soma will be your first reserve. We'll set that. Now, uh, there are ways to swap characters in here, now that there's three of us in here. We also have different <laughs> formations that we can go in, which will kind of dictate what my AI's behavior might be. So we can change the formation using the space bar. So notice that the leader Let's face forward. Perfect. Okay, so facing forward, you can see that the formation puts everybody on the right. I could change the formation to put my leader in the back. We're going to go with my leader being first. I can swap characters too. Uh, I probably won't do much of that. Again, pretty basic. So we've got to defeat monsters here. I don't have for campaign missions. You'll notice in the upper right, I do have the map of the area that I'm in, but I don't have that same overall area map that you saw that showed me which way the, the road was gonna split or anything like that. I can only see the map for the actual screen that I'm on. I'm gonna charge in on him. Oh, 
Whoop. There we go. All right, fought our way to the teleportal. Or the teleport, as the game calls it. Not tella, just tell. Whoa, look at that. A ton of monsters spawn. So you can imagine as the game gets further and further that this might get a bit crazy as far as uh, the number of characters on, or creatures and characters on screen. A little bit of lag there. I'm gonna chalk that one up the recording. It could be because of a massive in-spawn of, of mobs, maybe? I, I don't know, the performance of the game isn't stellar, so. But we'll chalk that up to the load of characters while recording because that's the first time I've seen it chop that badly. All right, working our way through. Got to defeat 15. Uh, admittedly, the abilities and things like that off the beginning of the game a little over or underwhelming. Uh, when you watch videos of some, I guess, higher level characters, much higher level characters, the screen does get rather flashy with a lot going on. So uh, perhaps it becomes more exciting. I I've never really been in danger yet, except for the one time that I got myself surrounded and um, got myself pummeled because I couldn't move off of the damage animations that I was taking. And uh, I was able to use a revive scroll, so there's multiple different revive scroll type items that you can use that have varying potencies and purposes. Uh, I would imagine that some of those may be cash shop, of course. Alright, let's save them. Come on. So our elite's all the way in the back. We are not going to run through these guys to get there, though. We're going to go ahead and take some of these out. That's all I need is to be surrounded by these big-ass trees. But we made it to him. And wrecked him. Absolutely. Wow, there's a nice camera view for you. I can't even change it for you. It's stuck in a celebration animation that looked like a damn awful upskirt. And we did it. Yay, us. Telpoint activated. Cleared the mission with an A rank, got experience. Again, that experience applied to everybody. Notice at the top that it said everybody in the party obtained that experience. So you're going to be doing a ton of grinding. A ton of grinding. But... There's an awful lot that keeps opening up along the way, so if it's your type of game, it's your type of game. And uh, I, I think this one's going to hit either some areas that people really love or just absolutely hate. I, I don't know if there's going to be too much of a middle ground with this game. And again, without playing for hours and hours, just trying to get you a first look, there's... Hey, we opened up the other town, the next town. Woohoo! Daily Dungeon, Royal Castle, things like that. I mean, we haven't even opened those up yet. So, there's quite a bit to unlock. If you want to check it out, it is now available through the Game & Game platform. So just go to their website, get the game downloaded, get started, and let us know what you think about it in the comments below. Until next time, gang, this is Magic Man saying stay safe, and we'll see you out on the servers.